Welcome everyone to part one of my How to Play Hearts of Iron 4 tutorial series. Today, we're going to do a short little episode on politics. So as you can see, we're playing as the United Kingdom, and you can quickly identify that by seeing our flag in the top left. And to view our political page, we click our flag. So I'm going to click it real quick. So now you see we have a few options we can choose from here and a few things to look over. We've got our leader. We've got a button that says select national focus. I'll get back to that in a second. But here are our national spirits. Now these are just modifiers that affect how your country performs in the world. Based on its historical period, you will add and remove these throughout the game. Then it shows what faction we're in. It shows our political party down here, or our major ideology. We're democratic, and it tells us our election. Then to the right of that is our political pie chart. Now this is how like uh, democratic communist or fascist you are blue is conservative red communist um, brown is fascist and gray is not aligned which is like if you are monarchy like iran and iraq start out as not aligned and the only tip of advice i have for you if you're not aligned is quickly choose a major ideology otherwise you'll be doing nothing for most of the game because you can't join anyone's faction or go to war soon enough so then below that we're going to click manage occupied territories now the thing is, since we are the UK, we have a lot of people's things. We just rightfully took it, but we can give it back. So I'll click it, and uh, you can see we have a lot of countries we stole from. A lot of options here. Now let's say we were playing and we wanted to give Ireland Northern Ireland. We could click this right here, give them back Northern Ireland, make it whole again. So that's pretty cool. We could be buddies with them now. But going back to our political page... Under that, these are our laws and government. Now, plain and simple, they are just modifiers that affect um, your conscription and your manpower, your trade, and your economy. And then these three right here are your advisors. Now, I'm going to quickly summarize them. So, if I click on this here, you may notice that a lot of them are grayed out. That is mostly because of this right here. It says we need 150 of this currency. Now, what is that? In the top left, you see it's political power. Um, and it says we earn 2.15 per day. And why do we get 2.15? Well, every country makes a base value of 2. Like, literally every country makes 2 by default. And because our stability is high, our stability is this balance right here. This is how stable and content our population is with the current government. You see it's high. That allows us to gain even more political power. And stability, when I scroll back over it, it gives us better factor output bonuses, so that's good. Stability being high is really important. If it gets low, you'll have mutinies and riots and factory, uh, factory strikes, and you don't need that. That'll really screw your war effort up. So I'll go to conscription law. Now what conscription law is, is it changes the amount of men you can put into your army, navy, and air force. The more you have, the larger of an army you can field. It ranges from disarm nation where you only have one percent to scraping the barrel where you basically recruit a whole fourth of your population. And then we'll go to trade law. Now this is how many of your resources go to market. If you're someone who doesn't have many resources, you won't really play as export focused. But since we have quite a few, we are giving more resources to market and we get some factory and research bonuses. Now it ranges from closed economy where you give no resources to free trade where you give almost all of them. So then we're going to go to economy law. Now, economy law, plain and simply, is how ready your economy is for war. So you'll go from civilian to early to partial, then to war economy, or total mobilization. You could stop on either of these two. But how it works is, uh, so at civilian economy, you see all of our factories are less powerful. And we have a lot of them being wasted on consumer goods, such as toasters and cars. We don't want that. We want to get to war economy or total mobilization, like I said, because as you see, consumer goods factories decreases significantly. And all that is, is uh, our civilian factories, which could otherwise be building, are being wasted on civ consumer goods. So we want them to not be wasted. So try and upgrade this throughout the game. Now we're going to move on to our advisors. Now we got three slots. All they are are political figureheads that alter our government in some way and add modifiers to our country. I like to play around with these, but they are a big help in the game. So don't, don't ignore them. They're important. Now down here is our research and production section. Now all these are 
are research bonuses. And what I mean by that is you choose one for each slot. You could choose your tank designer, your aircraft designer, whatever. But when you choose it, it gives bonuses to that certain field. So let's say I wanted to focus on naval bombers, you know, like naval aircraft. Well, if I click aircraft designer, you see we've got like fighter focuses. I would choose naval aircraft designer, ferry aviation, because it adds some nice research speed bonuses to our naval bombers and it increases their power. So that's what I would go with. But again, you might have noticed that I can't choose these because I need more political power. But don't worry, we make 2.15 a day. We'll be there in no time. So that's all the research and production out of the way. Now we move on to military staff. Now all these are are people you put in power, kind of like the advisors, and they add bonuses to how your army, navy, and air force performs. So I like to mix and match with those two. Finally, we're going to get back to our select a national focus. Now, you might have noticed there's notifications up here. My rule of thumb is clear those as soon as you can, if you can. But this one says no national focus set, so I'm going to click this button. Now, all this is, the tree may be a little daunting, but all it is is a way you could guide your government towards a certain end goal. Now, you don't have to choose just one. You can choose multiple of them and go down them as you want. And in the bottom you see there are these continuous focuses. This is when you like run out of focuses. You could just do this and you'll get like faster air production forever. But down up here we're going to go back up. Typically the f focuses uh, go over either diplomacy, um, internal relations like such as government, or they go over f industry and rearmament. So I think for the start of the game... You choose one of the start ones, one of the glowing ones. I'm going to choose this one here. It gives me four civilian factories, so we should be able to compete with the industrial monster of Germany. So I'll go ahead and click start. Now you see before I click start, it says political power cost plus one. I'll show you. We go back up here. I was making 2.15. Now I'm making 1.15. Because how national focuses work is they take 70 days to complete. And during that time, they suck one of your political power away per day so now I'm only earning 1.15 so now that we got that taken care of that should be about it for politics um, next part should be over diplomacy and decisions so stay tuned for that one